Little wins, right? Yeah. I did it, and there's Tom. Secret play. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. Okay, today I want to put one of these folding prop setups on my motor test stand from Candela Research. And what I'm going to be doing is checking 10 by 7 props with two different kinds of yokes. First of all, there is the regular yoke here, which is just straight. And there's also a twisted version that has a plus 2.5 degree twist in it to give the prop a little more pitch. So I want to try both of those on the motor test stand and see what they did. And the reason I'm doing this is because of Eduardo Fritas right here. He wanted me to test that thing. And the reason I even have this set up is because he recommended it. He uses it on his FX61 and since I'm going to later build an FX61, I still have mine in the box, I haven't built it yet, I was going to copy his power system. Here on this tab you can see where he's just done a video where he did a 19 kilometer flight. So his power system is working really well. He's got a 10 by 7 prop and he's got uh, the aeronaut uh, set up on here. And when you order one of these setups, you have to go on to the site and basically pick your blades, like if you want 10 by 7 pick them out of this list here, add them to your cart, and then pick out your spinner. And with uh, Eduardo he used the smallest one, so that's what, just what I'm using, the 36 millimeter right here, 4 millimeter shaft. I can see now that the uh, spinner was a 5 millimeter shaft size. So it's a 36 millimeter spinner with a 5 millimeter shaft stop size. And the reason for that is because of the because of the motor. This is the same motor that uh, Eduardo Fritas was using. And if you look on the specs for the motor, let me get it here. You can see it is also a 5 millimeter shaft size. It's right in that area right there, 5 millimeters. So that spinner is good for that motor. Here is what they recommend. If you get a 36 millimeter spinner, then you have to use the next size up for your yoke, which would be 38. You can't use a smaller size. So 38 is the next size up. So then you go to your yoke, and I got both the twisted yoke right here, and for that one you have to use the 42 actually instead of the 38 because it's for the spinner that's 33 to 40 millimeters so I got a 42 and then I also got a regular spinner and I got the 38 so I got both of them for testing and you also need a blade stopper which is this uh, little fiberglass piece here that keeps the blades from touching together and uh, damaging the blades so I want to show you what my order looked like from ESPRIT model. This is the website address right up here, ESPRITmodel.com. And so just let me show you my order, what it actually looked like. Here it is right here. There's their logo right there. And if you look down here, you'll see exactly what I ordered. So the whole order was $128 for the motor and the folding prop. So I'll just show you now the results of my bench testing these props with the two different yokes. And you can look at that and then we'll go on to the rest of the video. So what I've done for each prop, I have taken a full speed reading and a cruise speed reading, which is around 6 amps. So for the 10 by 7 folding prop with the standard yoke, the full speed thrust was 0.996 kilograms. So that's 996 grams. And the current that it drew was 24.4 amps. And the RPM was 9720 or 9720. And then for simulated cruise speed, I've got uh, 
384 grams thrust and 6.9 amps and an RPM of 6120. Now these RPM readings are, you know, they're just general. I don't know how accurate that RPM meter is. It's a Hobby King tachometer. So now for the next prop, which was the 10 by 7 folding prop with a 2.5 degree twisted yoke, at full speed we had 1.029 uh, kilograms of thrust and 30.3 amps of current and 9630 RPM. Cruise speed 382 grams, 6.6 .6 amps of thrust and 4560 RPM. Then just for kicks I used a stock prop, a master air screw 10 by 6 doesn't have quite as much pitch, but as you'll see it actually has more thrust. So we have a full speed, we have 1.098 kilograms of thrust uh, and a nice low current of 21.6 amps and 9900 RPM. Cruise speed 399 grams at 6 amps with 5,970 RPM. So obviously the standard prop, even though it's less pitch, still provides the most efficiency, low current, and high thrust. But since we need to use the folding props to prevent uh, damage on landing with the uh, FX-61, which is a wing and it scrapes the ground and sometimes even breaks a motor mount off, uh, we're using the folding props. So is the twisted yoke better than the one without the twisted yoke? Kind of questionable, I think. This one... Uh, the twisted yoke one had a little more thrust, but it was drawing a lot more amps to get that extra thrust. So it looks to me like they kind of, kind of the same, I think. This one's got almost as much thrust, but less amps. To me, it just looks like probably the standard yokes just as well and does just as well. So here's a look at all the components. We got the E-Flight Power 15 motor right here and it came with the motor and some other components that were in the box. We probably won't be using this spinner because we got our own now for the folding prop. And here's the motor mount. Okay, and then I ordered the blades right here, 10 by 7 spinner of course. And here we have the two yokes, the regular one and the twisted one. And as you look closer there you can see it's a plus 2.5 degree twist and the blade stopper, the mysterious blade stopper, which is just a piece of fiberglass that keeps the blades from touching together. Okay, so next we're going to try to assemble all this stuff and see what it looks like. So here's my twisted yoke, which I'll try later. Twisted yoke, uh, kind of sounds like an omelet shop or something. So I've got the other yoke right on this prop right here, and I haven't tightened the screws down. In fact, there's a couple of knots laying over here for the blades, but uh, this is basically how it looks in the pusher configuration. Since the uh, FX-61 is a pusher, we'll have to put it on the rear of the plane, and that's basically the way it looks. The curved side goes into the wind, so it'll be turning this way and pushing the breeze back that direction. So the way this went together is, there's just one little screw right here at the top. Let me get that out. And that screw right there just held the cap for the spinner on there. And here's the main gut. So there's the little blade keeper underneath the bolt and the retainer plate. So if we take the bolt and the retainer plate off, like that, and like that, there is the blade stopper. So that keeps the blades from folding all the way up and touching each other thus being damaged. But they fold up enough so that it doesn't scrape the ground when the FX-61 lands. So you can see how that went together. Blade stopper on top. 
yoke underneath right here, blades attached to the yoke with these bolts, and that whole thing went right in to the socket on the main body of the spinner right there. Sorry about my hands getting in the way, but I'll take it apart and show you a little more. So here is basically the exploded view. Start out here with the piece that goes on the shaft of the motor. And of course, this is for the 5 millimeter motor shaft, so that goes right on the motor like that. And then when the nut tightens down, it clamps onto the motor shaft. Most people know that. So that's pieces first, and that goes into here. The base of the spinner has a socket that crimps these little things together to clamp it on the shaft. And then there's a nice little trough here for the yoke to fit into. Here's the yoke. The two nuts are removed off it, and the two bolts are right in there like that. Blades have to go in the pusher configuration. If this was going on the front of a as a tractor on a regular plane, the blades would just flip over and be mounted the other way. That's the only difference. And then you got your blade stopper, which goes on next. And then this little retainer plate, the nut. And then finally, you just put the cap of the spinner on and put this in the hole. That screw goes in the hole and it fits into the end of this, actually, and holds the spinner on. So that's all there is to it. So I'm going to assemble it and uh, do some testing. So here's what the folding prop looks like mounted on the motor. Here is another view. So here is the motor and prop mounted on the Candela motor test stand or thrust stand if you want to call it that. Here is the Candela research label down here and as you can see the prop is mounted in a tractor configuration. There's just no way I could put a pusher configuration on this test stand because the motor would have to be mounted in the back over here and there's no place to mount it there, no firewall or anything that I can mount it on. So I had to flip the uh, yoke around and mount it in the tractor configuration. But it should have the same thrust either way. It's not going to make much difference. So for power, I'm going to be using this 3-cell uh, 4500 milliamp hour LiPo. And instead of using the receiver, which is right under the tachometer here, instead of using that receiver, I'm actually going to be using this board down here which John built and this uh, ramps the speed up to full speed gradually as long as you're holding this button and then when you let go of the button it'll stop and that is powered by this two cell battery over here this two cell lipo plugs right in here that's the power for the circuitry here there's a 5 volt regulator and then a chip and he's got the ESC plugged right in this port here, which goes up to the ESC, which is over there. So that's basically how it works. And what you do is you press this button, and I've got the blades off just for safety. As you press this button, it'll ramp up. So that's basically how we're going to test it, and the scale will go over here to measure how much thrust we got. It'll go underneath it, right here. So that's the basic idea. Okay, so here's our basic setup. I've got a flashlight here aimed at the tachometer, and I got two video cameras here, one aimed at the scale, and one aimed at the tach and the ammeter. Okay, first propeller up is the Master Air Screw 10x6. Okay.
Okay, now we have the 10 by 7 folding prop with twisted yoke. This is with the 10 by 7 folding prop that has the standard yoke on it. So those are the results. And Eduardo, I hope you're happy with this, if you can get some use out of it. And everyone else, uh, if you want to leave comments under the video about it, go ahead and don't forget to subscribe if you liked it. Hit your button.